Hey everybody, today we've got a Lincoln Electric Ranger 250 uh, gas engine driven welder that's got a no start condition. Um, the guy called me yesterday saying that it wouldn't start. I was under the impression uh, that, it, that it would start because he wasn't very clear. And I got here this morning. And I hit the start button. It gives me that yellow light. Of course, there's no label as to what that yellow light means. But I do hear something clicking, if you listen. So, I guess we'll check the battery voltage first. And then um, start doing some electrical diagnosis to try to get this thing running. I'll let you know what I find. So I got this um, Lincoln Walder here, no start condition. So the first thing I wanted to do was check the battery voltage. So uh, in the end compartment, slides out from the bottom of the welder, find a little battery. And then put the test light on there. And of course, with a good ground. And we've got 12.1 volts. So we go back to the starter. Let me shine my light in here. And uh, we find the S terminal wire, which is the start wire, comes right from the push button on the front of the machine, or actually goes through a relay first. And just to make sure that the starter is getting the signal to start, we plug our test light into that S wire. Ignition on, and we got 12 volts there as well. So now, I can short out that solenoid and feed 12 volts directly to the S terminal with my test light. So the S terminal is that little one there with a hole in it, and then battery positive is this larger terminal. So if I take and put my test light in between the two to connect them it should activate the solenoid and uh, engage the starter I'm going to try to hold my light here and show you there we go I don't know if you heard that first, it was like really weak and dull, so it was probably bad contacts in the solenoid or just maybe a bad spot on the armature or something inside the solenoid or the uh, starter motor, but uh, after a couple times of clicking it, it, it went and I actually didn't expect that to happen because I tried it a couple times before I started the video and um, it would not do anything it was just turning real slow the Bendix wasn't even coming out of the starter and turning the engine over so um, I'm gonna hook that wire back up and we will uh, try to get this thing running so I'll leave the video rolling for a second
Okay, climb back over this thing. Now we're gonna try and fire it up. So kind of what I'm thinking now is that this was a crank no start condition and the guy just kept cranking that thing. Starter got hot, which is why it wouldn't turn this morning when I got here. And um, I got it to turn obviously, but the starter's probably on its last legs now. Probably melted most of the solder out of the armature. So now we move on to uh, part two of diagnosis of this crank no start. Um, I'm gonna check for spark first and then check for fuel. I don't smell anything yet. It should be uh, easy if this guy ran out of gas, but who knows. I'll let you know what I find. So we got spark. Well, the culprit was gas. Now I only put maybe a gallon in it and it started overflowing. So I don't know what's going on. If the pickup in there is broken or what, I'm going to have to do a little bit of looking, see, but it is a gas issue. I'll fire it up here. So, I don't think it was out of gas, but I think there's a gas feed issue to the engine. Um, whether it's pickup tube or hose or something dangling down in the tank or something floating in the tank, plugging it up. Whatever the case may be, there is an issue with the fuel system because I think this thing holds quite a bit more than a gallon. Usually these, these big welders hold like eight gallons or better. So, if, uh, if I dive into it some more today, I'll let you know what I find. What I found here is a leaking hose at the base of the fuel filter. It's cracked real good. It goes right down to the um, fuel tank. So we're going to fix that hose real quick. We're actually going to replace the whole thing because you can see right there it's all cracked. I'll see if I got a new fuel filter. Throw that on. And actually I can see this. It's just running right out right now. So thing probably lost prime and um, for whatever reason the I guess overfilling it you know right up to the filler neck um, made it so this fuel level was higher than the filter so it didn't it was able to pick fuel up again and now it's kind of gravity feeding out of that so chances are when I got here, this thing had already drained down past the level where it's at now. You know, right now it's, if you look from the side here, you can see that the, the fuel cap right there, the fuel fill where it was overflowing is higher than the, where the fuel filter is next to the oil filter there. So it's just gravity feeding down. It was able to suck fuel up and catch prime and now that hose is shot, so it's just leaking out of there. And uh, it will leak down until the fuel level gets below the point of the leak. And then after that, the fuel pump will just suck air through that rotten hose. And it won't catch prime and, and won't give the engine any fuel. So I'll get that changed up. We'll shoot a quick follow-up and be done. Well, I ended up doing all new fuel lines on this Lincoln welder. Placed all of them. The two, uh, the fuel inlet line to the pump, the outlet line from the pump to the carburetor, and then the uh, crankcase 
line to the pump as well. Uh, I haven't started it yet, so we'll see what happens. See if this thing is actually going to pop off. Fixed another one, send it on its way.